All right. Well, welcome to Admin. Um, Thursday, October 26th. Take it away, Annie. All right. Um, it looks like online we have Cheryl Hartman, Dave Strohmeyer, Elisa Beckholt, Emily Brock, Kyla Lennertz, Melissa Fisher, Martin Kitston, sorry, trying to go, and M. Cat in 206. Oh, we yes. have. Hi, Chris. We have Juanita Vero, Commissioner Vero. We have Chris Lounsbury, John Hart, Annie Kathy, Emmy Bristow, and Carrie Powers. Okay. Are there is there any public comment on items not on the agenda? Okay, consent agenda. There is only one item. How do we feel about fresh start? I feel pretty good about that this morning. I will move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Emily Brock. She says she's muted, but Emily, you might be muted there. We can't hear you. I'm here. I'm just slow on ah. the trigger. No worries. Um, so um this item is um uh, a motion to approve um, deconstruction of the grandstands at the fairgrounds. Um, the contract is with Jackson Contractor Group in the amount of um, $246,354. Um, out of the five bidders, three rivers, three rivers Landworks was the low bidder to deconstruct the fairgrounds uh, to deconstruct the grandstands at the fairgrounds, not the whole fairgrounds. Um, <laughs> three Rivers uh, sub has subcontracted with Heritage Timber to salvage all the reusable material, including the roof, um, the roof, the beams, the dimensional lumber, um, and all that will be for resale. And then Jackson Contractor Group will salvage the bleachers, lighting, and sound system for reuse in the new grandstands. Um, so we expect Northwestern to retire the electrical service this week, at which time we will officially submit to the city for a uh, historic demolition permit. Um, the existing grandstands are a contributing resource to the Fairgrounds um, National Registrar of Historic District, although um, our um, um, architect, Paul Felicetti, thinks that we're way out of compliance with that existing district and that we because of the work we've done in the um because the maintenance shop went away a few years ago and all the work that we did with the historic plaza um um but anyway so it's non-conforming but it's still there because nobody's taken it away dave might know more about it how the process works than i do but um we do expect to receive the historic demolition permit based on um the major structural integrity issues that make the grandstands unsafe to use um, and in the board packet, I included an analysis from DCI, Tom Bedette of DCI, um, 2015 and 2023. Um, in 2015, they said the grandstands have five years um, left at most. It's been five years. And so they come out every year before the fair to make sure that they're still structurally intact and safe to use for the fair. Um, they started doing that in 2015 for us. This past year they did it and they said, this is the last time we're going to do this for you. Um, it's it's uh, going to be, they need to be retired. So the structural integrity issues uh, make them unsafe to use. And then coupled with, um, and this according to Paul Felicetti at a &E, it is impossible to modify them to meet ADA requirements. So the new grandstands, um, which are going to be called um, the Klaus Bauer Arena, um, as you guys know, because of the generous gift by Missoula Concrete. Um, the new grandstands will be the third grandstands in this location since the existing site was created in 1911. Um, so they'll be a similar size and scale of its predecessors in keeping with the context of the original relationship of the grandstands to the historic and commercial buildings. So um, we do feel like it's a it's the best um, scenario for maintaining the the um, historic context of the, the fairgrounds and how the grandstands were used. So um, 
yeah, I would ask for your support. And how long does the is a permitting process does that take? Um, so permitting it that depends. Um, the historic are you talking about permitting for the deconstruction? Yeah, sorry, that's pretty sorry. quick. Okay, so I guess when what's the earliest deconstruction begins after the after Northwestern turns the electricity off? I mean, I don't, I'm, I don't work for the city, so I cannot, I really actually can't answer that question, but okay, I, we're I, hoping, well, ballpark, ballpark, yeah. we're hoping to start in the next couple weeks. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so Emily, uh, just to, uh, related to that and to follow up on the message we got this morning from Heritage Timber about an earlier start date, early, I'm not exactly sure earlier than what, a, a couple weeks between now and when deconstruction could begin seems pretty quick. Uh, do you have any anything else to share there? No, I think what they're suggesting is that we work to ensure that the two weeks does happen and that it doesn't get held up in process. So, if, you know, that we put, you know, continue to reach out to the city and ask them to move the permit along as fast as they can. And Chris, you've done that, correct? I did give Dale a heads up, yes. So. Okay. Yeah, and when we submitted the um, permit for building, which obviously takes much, much longer because it's a, they have to really review the design and make sure it's safe. Um, Commissioner Slots Nick's name is on that permit. And um, I know that he has reached out to the city mayor as well. All this and okay. the reason why we're, we're the reason why we're pushing for this um, is so that we can get it built before the fair next year. Otherwise, we would go through and just wait our turn. OK. Thank you. OK, well, I'm uh, good with this. I'll move that we approve the contract. So, uh, second, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks so much, Emily. Thank you. And how do you feel about, I mean, is there any, was that kind of both of them together? Uh, no. no. No, So the other, the other agenda item um, is um, to approve an amendment to our contract with um, A&E Architects to um, push forward on the design of the grandstands for 266,950. Um, we've already obviously been doing this work, as you know. Um, a lot of it um, has been done from um, a previous contract that we had, getting us to 30% um, design. We did have the 30% design already contracted from a few years ago. Um, They've uh, been doing this work. Um, they kind of streamlined it so that we could get the permits in. Um, but uh, this will be to get us all the way through the bidding documents and construction oversight um, and to finalize the um, construction documents. Uh, thank you. I was I was merging and lumping and <laughs> thank you. Me too. <laughs> Oh, Martin has a question. Okay, good morning. Uh, Emily, can you just remind guys like me where this funding comes from or how this is being paid for? Well, that's actually a really good question. Um, and it's not a reminder, it's maybe new information to you. Um, so the design piece is able, we, we are able to um, use some of the money left over from the special district to get us through design. But I think you're asking about probably the grandstands themselves. Is that what you're really getting at? Yeah, that sounds sounds right. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't have it right in front of me, but the grandstands is being paid for by a combination of public and private dollars. Um, the vast majority of the public dollars are coming from revenue from the Western Montana Fair. So we are taking, um, we have turned the fair around and we are now in the black by um, quite a bit. And so we're taking the excess revenue from the next 10 years of the fair to pay for the grandstands. 
um, and that includes sponsorships. Um, and then we've also raised um, about half a million dollars that we have in cash from private donors. And then we got an in-kind donation for all of the concrete risers. Great, thank you, Emily. So those are kind of the big, the big chunks. The money left over from the special district is pretty small. It's only, um, it, it, actually it's about $300,000. So it's not much, it pretty much covers design and the work we've been doing so far. But Thank all you. of the building itself is really, it's coming, it's not coming off of um, a tax increase. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. We're, we're proud of it because one of the things that we um, sort of um, banked on or sort of betted on when we did the first phase of redevelopment was that it would generate excitement and revenue for the fair so that future phases could be paid for um by um the users and by revenue and now we're seeing that 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 um bet pay off thank you and I mean, we're seeing it happen so quickly like this is amazing so well done <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Doesn't feel quick to me, you know, I've been working on it for seven years, eight years, but um, <laughs> yes, it will in the sense that like the physical, the physical, physical stuff is happening quickly. It is definitely happening qu quickly. Yeah. Um, well, any other discussions? Dave, how do you feel about this? I move that we <laughs> approve the amendment to the design contract. <laughs> Second. Okay. Any further comment? Oh, sorry, Martin. Go ahead. Because hand is just oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> no worries. Um, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Correspondence. Yeah, no formal correspondence today, commissioners. This is the letter that you signed at Tuesday's admin so, related to the trapping in Lolo that's just being noticed on this agenda. And oh, it is okay. now and a, moot, uh, a permit. It is a yeah. moot point. Oh, or he, there you go. He pulled his application. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Oh, um, <laughs> wow, sure. that's amazing. I'm, I'm like, that's never ever happened. That you know, something. <laughs> and you know something that Chris doesn't know. That's not that, true. <laughs> wow, <laughs> or that Carrie didn't know about. It. Like, I'm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um. Uh. This is it. Have a great rest of your morning, everyone. Be safe out there. Thank you. Bye.